Oh, yes, of course, of course. How could I have missed it? Oh, I didn't see you come in there. Welcome to Rational Science Presents. In today's episode, we will be discussing what is rational and distinguishing it from what is not rational. So, I hope you'll enjoy. Now please, please let me get back to my work. Oh, yes. So, today I'm going to explain why quantum, relativity, and other math-based pursuits have some predictive power, but no explanatory power whatsoever, rendering them Ptolemaic religions. Quantum and relativity simply do not qualify as science. Now, these are some strong accusations, but by the end of this video, I aim to make this as clear as identifying a triangle or a circle. In other words, all of the definitions will be clearly communicated and the arguments clearly justified, so you won't need to guess. Now, let's find out who Ptolemy was and what I mean when I say that quantum is Ptolemaic. Ptolemy was a guy who invented a concept called an epicycle. This allowed him to track and predict apparent retrograde motions of heavenly bodies. However, the physical cause or mechanism responsible for the epicycles and other changes in orbital motion were left completely unexplained, and you were left to fill in the blanks. However, Ptolemy's predictive power is undeniable. Quote, Ptolemy has been admired for the accuracy of his predictions. And this is what I mean when I say that quantum is Ptolemaic. It's just a model that does not attempt to explain anything about how reality really is, but is instead used to make predictions. It seemed as though science was slowly breaking away from the Ptolemaic nonsense until Niels Bohr hit the scene. His mystical description of quantum gave it an allure that extended far beyond the confines of the small community of quantum mathematicians at the time. Niels Bohr said it himself, quote, Those who are not shocked when they first come across quantum have not understood it. When it comes to atoms, language can only be used as in poetry. The poet, too, is not so nearly con concerned with describing facts as with creating images. It is wrong to think that the task of physics is to find out how nature is. Physics concerns what we can say about nature. By comparing physics to poetry and describing it as the creation of shocking images, he gave the field a mysterious allure that permeated our culture and still does today. This happened despite the fact that Bohr very clearly states that his physics doesn't even seek to explain how nature really is. It only concerns our, quote, statements about nature. Nevertheless, this renewed focus on predictions rather than rational explanations has opened the door for all kinds of irrational hypotheses to masquerade as science. These days, like with Ptolemy, the only quality that so-called scientists are looking for in a hypothesis is its predictive power. Even Wikipedia says that a scientific hypothesis is a proposed explanation of a phenomena which still has to be rigorously tested. In contrast, a scientific theory has undergone extensive testing and is generally accepted to be the accurate explanation behind an observation. But you have to see here, explanation in these cases really means a description or prediction, because those are the only things that they're really testing in the lab. Rochester University also helps illuminate this issue. Quote, if the experiments bear out the hypothesis, it may come to be regarded as a theory or a law of nature. These quotes go to show that we haven't moved very far from Ptolemy indeed. 
The only requirement these days, like with Ptolemy, is that you can make accurate predictions that can be tested and confirmed in the laboratory. But if religious nuts like Ptolemy could do this, then it should show that there's clearly more to science than predictive power alone. However, quantum and relativity pride themselves on their predictive power, and they want you to be stunned and awed by it so that you can suspend disbelief and ignore their inexplicable, irrational non-mechanisms that I will term here epicycles. They use their predictions to push nonsense and irrational models of reality upon an unsuspecting, gullible audience. Now we've already discussed it, but here's what I mean when I say quantum's epicycles. Ptolemy's epicycles were magical, inexplicable behaviors of orbiting objects. Somewhere within the normal orbit of a body, it magically went around another smaller orbit within the orbit, and that is what he called an epicycle. This phenomena was necessary for producing accurate predictions, but had no grounding in reality whatsoever, with no physical mechanisms underlying it. And this is what I mean when I say epicycle. It's an irrational or inexplicable magical aspect of a theory. See, science does not propose mysteries. It instead explains what previously seemed inexplicable about reality. We do not attempt to explain that reality is inexplicable. See, one of the basic assumptions of science is that reality can be understood and that phenomena can be rationally explained. However, quantum is unscientifically built upon similar epicycles. So let's explore them. The first and most obvious is the wave-particle duality of light. Early physicists working on the architecture of light began with the assumption that light was mediated by a stream of particles, which helped explain some phenomena, such as the photoelectric effect, but as other phenomena, such as the wavelength frequency proportionality, ray reversibility, and of course the famous double slit experiment became better understood, they found that the particle model could not explain these phenomena, and so they had to come up with something new. Except this time, what they came up with wasn't even a thing. It was a concept. You see, the math heads who can't e cannot even tell the difference between concepts and objects magically converted their particle into the concept of a wave. Not only does the object convert from a particle into a wave, like converting a heart into love, but it is allegedly a particle and a wave simultaneously. This is what is considered an irrational explanation. This means that the actors involved cannot even be imagined. It's impossible to imagine a standalone thing being a wave, just as it is impossible to imagine a standalone thing being love, since both to wave and to love are actions of a thing, not a thing in and of itself. Any attempt to represent a wave as a static, standalone thing results in a, something like a curved noodle or a bedspring. Bill Gady asks, You wonder how it is possible for a physical object to look simultaneously like a golf ball and a stretched bedspring. What is it that the mathematicians are talking about? This idea is called complementarity, and it was, of course first mentioned by Niels Bohr. So are you beginning to understand why he did not want you to think that science is actually about reality? Bohr's principle of complementarity is the most revolutionary scientific concept of this century, and is the heart of his 50 years search for the full significance of the quantum idea. Like Ptolemy without epicycles, quantum without complementarity falls apart. It's important to understand that Niels Bohr knew this, and so he covered his own ass by saying, quote, There is no quantum world. There is only abstract physical description. It is wrong to think that the task of physics is to find out how nature is. 
Bohr gave up on trying to figure out how reality really works, and instead proposed irrational models for the purposes of prediction only. However, this is not science. Yet the layman and gullible listener interprets the wave-particle duality literally, and yet they still believe it. This has allowed mathematicians, or should I say myth-magicians, less honest than Bohr, to grab a hold of this and run with it to the most wild and fantastic absurd conclusions. But when these absurdities are critically analyzed and rationally evaluated, the priests attack rationality itself. Remember, like in the Bible, the best quantum authorities will tell you to toss reason aside. Rationality and understanding are tricks of the devil. Only arrogant fools wish to understand reality, according to these mystics. The wannabe wizard Richard Feynman says it best. He says, Nobody understands quantum mechanics. And popular science writer John Horgan makes the point even clearer, defending quantum from any rational analysis whatsoever by saying, quote, Modern science is difficult and often counterintuitive. Where intuition and common sense have failed, they had to create new forms of intuition, mainly through the use of abstract mathematics. Where common sense fails, uncommon sense must be created. Of course, we must use uncommon sense sensibly. Indeed, mathematicians are willing to toss aside even their collective common sense in favor of saving all of the most fantastic elements of old religions, like time travel. Quote, This violates our intuitive notions of causality. However, intuition is not an infallible guide, so we must be careful. Is time travel really impossible? Or is it just another phenomena where impossible means that nature is weirder than we think? It's like Bill Gady says, the myth magicians, I mean the mathematicians, have replaced science with supernatural and irrational explanations, or religion. And this sort of attack upon rationality and common sense reason only serves to confirm this. Another inexplicable epicycle of quantum is the force of pull between discrete particles, such as in gravity and molecular bonding. Quantum is a particle theory. Indeed, every single atomic and subatomic particle in the standard model is assumed to be discrete. In other words, they are all completely separated from each other, and not at all interconnected physically. Yet these disconnected grains of sand somehow mysteriously, magically pull each other together. Unfortunately, in physics, if you present an object shaped like a grain of sand, then it damn well better act like a grain of sand. Like with Ptolemy's epicycles, some action is ascribed to an object without including any possible physical mechanism to mediate such action. Even Isaac Newton understood. It is inconceivable that inanimate brute matter should, without the mediation of something else, which is not material, operate upon and affect other matter without mutual contact. That gravity should be innate, inherent, and essential to matter so that one body may act upon another at a distance, through a vacuum, without the mediation of anything else, by and through which their action and force may be conveyed from one to another, is to me so great an absurdity that I believe no man who has in philosophical matters a competent faculty of thinking can ever fall into it. Gravity must be caused by an agent acting constantly according to certain laws. But quantum does not even attempt to model an interconnected system of atoms, they provide a supernatural account of how these particles act, claiming that they pull from a distance without physical contact. And that's why this is supernatural. It's because all of the acting objects can be visualized, but what actually happens between them is not physically possible and does not follow from their physical structures. The image that quantum presents you is that of a beach ball pulling on a tennis ball through an ocean of sand grains. 
And yet, despite this, in describing certain phenomena, such as quantum entanglement, the establishment presents atoms as if they are connected, but then, of course, doubles back to correct such a misconception by stating with a straight face how mysterious it is for two disconnected particles to interact with each other instantaneously. This is simply not rational and is painfully dishonest. In conclusion... The whole point of this video was just to introduce you to the objective conceptual problems with quantum theory and to give you a clear idea about critical thinking concepts when it comes to physics. We need to, as a community, learn the lesson that Ptolemy taught us, that accurate predictions do not require rational hypotheses as a foundation, so we should not accept a theory as scientific just because it has predictive power. The primary criterion of a hypothesis being a scientific is rationality. The language of physics is objective visualization. Anything else is supernatural or irrational. And for this reason, we should reject quantum and seek new rational explanations. Thank you so much for watching. Um, my name is Mike Hutner. And I am an admin at the Rational Scientific Method group on Facebook. We are attempting to reshape the scientific method and have discussions like this on a daily basis. So I hope that you come and join us and uh, take part in the revolutionary discussion. Thank you.